healed and well? Yes. In the sweet name, name of, Jesus. of Jesus. A lot's changed in the last year. We're finally starting to return to some sense of normal, thanks to the vaccine, among other things. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some pastors who might have jumped the gun a little bit and wrote some checks with their mouth that they couldn't cash. Like this fine, young-looking man right here. So let's take a look at 2020's favorite televangelist, Kenneth Copeland. Let's get into it. January 2020, the first U.S. case is announced. Most people aren't freaking out yet. In fact, at this point, I wasn't convinced it was going to be a big deal. I'd never seen a pandemic before, knew nothing about it. I was going about my life as usual, unsuspecting and unaware. The cases started popping up everywhere. A new case reported in every single state. February 22nd, the stock market completely tanks. Everybody who was going to take it seriously at all for the next year is now taking it seriously. Rumors start spreading about how it all started. A team of scientists goes to ground zero in China to interview people. We start hearing reports of Australians fighting over toilet paper, and the trend started spreading here in the US. We started seeing awesome toilet paper memes everywhere. People were afraid to go outside. Reports come in from countries that have it worse than us, where people have to get passes to exit their houses and go to the grocery store. We start to hear the term social distancing a lot more. Nobody really knows how to handle something like this. So we look to the scientists who do. Well, not all of us. For some bizarre reason, some people look to this fine looking gentleman for answers. A disturbing number of people, in fact. Little did we know, we'd be in for a wild ride over the course of the next year. And that ride still isn't completely over. Scientists knew this wouldn't be a two-week thing. By mid-March, Trump was pushing the idea that it would be over by Easter. And some poor suckers believed him. So what did the televangelists do? They fell in line, of course. Little did we know at the time, some of these people have completely worked Trump into their theology. They view him as their savior, sent from God. They view him in a similar light to Jesus. The first thing he said is, he is going to save you from things you don't know you need to be saved from yet. And then the Lord progressively began to speak regarding that. And he said, this time in the presidency is going to be a hinge of the ages. And you be known as before Trump and after Trump because of the way I'm going to use him. I'm using wow. him as a Trump card, but I'm the Trump card player. They said we wouldn't have a choice. It was in God's hand, and he chose Trump before the election even took place. This was in October of 2019, a full year before voting even started. And the Lord, it was like, he's like I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. I usually give you all that option. This time, I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. This is... This is a, a, a moment of the ages. This will go down. This time period will go down as a before and after AD, you know, a, a, but BC, AD, depending on what terminology you use now. People were scared and confused, so they looked to the people they trust for answers. For some inexplicable reason, people looked to none other than Kenneth Copeland for answers. When people looked to him, what did he do? March 12th, 2020, he released this. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He received your healing. Yes. Say it, I take it. I take it. I have it. I have it. It's mine. It's, it's mine. mine. I thank you and praise you for it. Yes, Lord. And I forgive if I have aught against any. I forgive. And I praise you that I'm well and whole. This guy told his audience, largely older people, to put their hand on their TV screens and he'd heal them, giving them the confidence to go outside and hang around family members who have contact with the public. How many people's lives did he hold in his hands? Let's continue. Yes. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. I'm healed. Yes. And I consider not my own body. Yes. I consider yes. not my own body. I consider not symptoms in my body. I consider, I consider not, not symptoms, symptoms in my body. But only that which God has promised. Only, only that, that which God, which God has promised. Only that what the Word has said. Only, only that, that what the Word has said. And by His stripes I was healed. <laughs> and by His stripes I am healed now. I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed and the devil's trying to give me the flu. That's right. Or whatever else kind of thing he's trying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> healed and well. Yes. In the sweet name, name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Glory to God. 
Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He convinced his audience they were healed. What good could this have possibly done? Why did he choose to do it? What did he or anybody else stand to gain from this? Absolutely nothing. The only explanation I can see is that the guy is a true believer. He really believes to the bottom of his black heart that he holds the power of God in his hands. God has gifted him with the ability to do literally anything because he's his chosen prophet. Of course it didn't work. Nobody but him and his suckers believed it would. So what did he do next? March 29th, 2020, about two weeks later, he released this. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Standing in the office of the prophet of God, I execute judgment on you, COVID-19. Oh, I execute judgment on you, oh. Satan, you destroyer, you killer, you get out, you break your power, you get off this nation. I demand Amen. judgment on you. I demand, oh. I demand, I demand a vaccination to come immediately. Yes. I love how his hype man has no idea what's going on and Copeland just jumps into it with no warning. You can tell the hype man was just trying to keep up. It's hilarious. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So he demanded a vaccine to come immediately. Did it happen? No. A small company known as Moderna, based out of Massachusetts, had been working on a new type of vaccine for years. As soon as this came up, they refocused their efforts. They gathered data on the virus in the early days, and they'd been diligently working on it since. Kenneth Copeland had nothing to do with it. Lots of companies were working on one. Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Pfizer were among the most prominent. God is not saving us from this. Science is. Let's continue. from your Amen. place of authority, destroyer. You come down and you crawl on your oh, belly gosh. like God commanded you when he put his foot on your head in the Garden of Eden. You will destroy through COVID-19. No more! No more. No more. It... No more. Is... Finished. finished it is over and the united states of america is healed you, and well thank you Father. again Okay, well, it didn't work the first time. Did it work this time? No, things only got worse. This came out on March 29th. This is where we were when Copeland declared it over. This graph can't possibly be interpreted in such a way as to prove Copeland used the power of Jesus to end it. It only got worse from that point forward. And I'm sure the fact that he told his congregation that there was nothing to worry about didn't help, but it didn't end there. Oh no, it got worse. April 2nd, about five days after the last one, he released another video about it. Check this one out. COVID-19. COVID-19. I blow the wind of God. The wind of God on you. On you. You are destroyed forever. You are destroyed forever. And you will never be back. And you'll never be back. Thank you, our God. Thank you. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it Cause it to happen. Cause it to happen. Great idea. Go around blowing on shit. That's definitely going to help. Again, I absolutely love the little circle of hype men. At this point, I have to imagine he learned better because nothing improved. It got dramatically worse, and he continued to claim divine authority and healing people in God's name. He continued supporting his new messiah, Trump. He continued to lie about it and downplay it and discourage people from taking it seriously. Remember, the guy's audience demographic leans older. He held lives in his hands, but it seemed like all he was really worried about was making a fool of himself. Himself, if he even worried about that. Honestly, the dude claimed to have destroyed it on a total of at least four separate occasions. And when his predictions and claims failed, he just kept on keeping on. Nobody in his circles held him to account. Nobody called him out. Nobody brought it up and asked what happened. They just pretended nothing happened at all. Now here we are a full year later. He released those clips on March 12th, March 29th, and April 2nd, 2020. Said God was going to heal everybody. Said it was over. Definitively. That's it. And a year later, what saved us? A vaccine. 
from scientists and the distribution arm and funding programs from the government. I just got my first vaccine the other day. Is Copeland ever going to realize he's talking to an imaginary friend? Will he ever realize that he does more harm than good? Will he ever accept the fact that he can't harness the power of God to do anything he wants? Probably not. He'll continue pretending he can and gullible suckers will believe him. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring. Or you can check out my game shop. I sell cartridge and controller stands for every system from the Atari to the Nintendo Switch, so give it a look. You might find something you like. You can also donate to me directly on PayPal. All links are in the description and the pinned comment as always. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.